Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A and hopefully we are back on track. Uh, but before I get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the monogram print. And I've actually been using this uh, for a few weeks now and because I've been so stressed out, I haven't had a chance to, you know, swap it out or anything. But Regardless. All right, so let's get started with the very first question from LK Whip. What are your thoughts on the six key holder Berlingo? I can't seem to find a ring holder that I like. I have bought the clay and the six ring key holder in the past. Um, the Berlingo is a Louis Vuitton small leather good, and uh, you know, I've never. I'm not a big fan of it. And I think the reason why that is, is because of its shape. Um, and there are two different uh, styles that you can get. You can get it in canvas and it has rivets on the side. It's, it's a very odd shape uh, and it retails for $205 here in the States. And then the other leather is $235. It's a leather piece and it's $235 and it also has rivets on the side. Um, but I think honestly, the shape is what throws me off the most. So I don't know if it would be too comfortable in a sense to be able to wear. So if you're, you know, what I like about the six ring key holder, um, is because it is small enough to a certain extent to be able to fit in it and anything, or if I was to run errands, I could put this in my pocket if I needed to, and it doesn't take up too much space. So it's very, very compact in my opinion. Uh, but definitely if you have a larger key fob, even if this is a six key, it won't, I mean, there's a chance that it won't fit in there and it might be a little too, too bulky. Uh, but I feel that the Burlingo is just, I, I, I think it's too awkward to be honest. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, there's some people out there that I know have it and they really do like it. But again, I think it's the shape that just throws me off. Um, just because I tend to like flatter, more compact uh, items. But if you've already tried the clay and you've already tried the six key holder, I don't know what else. Um, I mean, you can give that one a try uh, to see if that works out for your lifestyle. Uh, but I honestly wouldn't, I wouldn't know of any other SLG from Louis Vuitton that would be small enough that you would be able to just use, um, you know, run and go if you're doing errands or things like that without it being too, too big. So, uh, I honestly, I have no idea, but I'm not too big of a fan on it. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know why it reminds me of like, um, like a popsicle or something when I was a kid. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Probably not. Like the ones that you push up, <laughs> that's what it feels like, or that's what it seems like, but who knows? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Deanna Tiffany, what's your opinion on the Yves Saint Laurent bags, specifically the black monogram kibosh? Do you know if these hold up as well as Louis Vuitton bags do? I'm looking for a black leather bag are there any Louis Vuitton emprunt bags you would recommend? Um, the Yves Saint Laurent, uh, the black monogram kibosh, uh, kibosh, I absolutely loved it. I saw it at the store a few times that I've been and I've tried it on. Uh, it does have, it's a little bit more structured, so I love that. You know, it appeals to me. Uh, I don't like the fact that it has a, um, it has a smaller strap or it has two leather handles and then it also has a longer strap for uh, wearing crossbody um, and being able to be hands-free. Uh, so obviously I don't, I don't like that feature, but you guys know that's how I am. And uh, the, when I was speaking to the sales associate, we were talking about it and he was just like, it's a great bag. It's, you know, it's got great structure. The leather is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a lot of the Yves Saint Laurent bags have some of the best leather and I like it because they're so carefree. Uh, but I can tell you that the opening that that bag has, it has a little flap and it has the Yves, uh, the Yves Saint Laurent uh, emblem on it. I can see how over time that little open or that little flap might end up getting a little bit too much wear because that's, that's pretty much how you get inside of the bag. So if you were to open up that flap, you'd be able to open up the bag at a glance. I mean, you can still put your hands inside the pockets with the, with the flap on, but I can see how it can be maybe a little bit too fussy of an opening for some people. Um, but I, I really do like it. And I, I really wish it didn't have that flap on there. It's kind of like the Louis Vuitton, the Capucine, how it has that flap, but you can always put the flap inside, um, and you know, be able to open it up without a problem. But then that also defeats the purpose of having that monogram on the outside, you know? Um, and what on prompt bag would I recommend? Even though I don't have an on prompt bag from Louis Vuitton as of yet, um, I really do like the Montaigne. I love the Montaigne the most because of its structure. So even though I do like the St. Germain and I think it would be a great, you know, bag, 
I love the fact that the Montaigne stands on its own, and you guys know how much I love structured bags. I don't like the ones that, you know, tend to get floppy over time, and especially with Ompr over time, it'll start to get a lot softer, the leather will, and I feel that with the Montaigne, the structure that it has, you won't run into that problem, or if you do, it will be very, very small compared to the other Ompr bags. Uh, but the Montaigne for me is definitely number one, even though it has the extra strap to be able to wear a crossbody. I think it is an absolutely beautiful bag. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you were looking for a Louis Vuitton piece, um, but I do love Yves Saint Laurent. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Vanel cut long with many festivals soon approaching where we live. I was curious, what bag do you use to go to a festival slash carnival? Uh, personally, I like to use something, uh, I like to go compact and I like to use something that I will be extremely carefree. Uh, so I would recommend, uh, I definitely would recommend Damier Ben over any other, um, you know, any other Louis Vuitton canvas because it, because it's so carefree. You don't have to worry about the vaquetta. You don't have to worry about patina. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, but, uh, Eva clutch is great because it's compact. You can have it against your body. So it doesn't take up too much space. I don't like carrying big bags with me when I'm in, a, you know, in crowded places because you just never know. And, you know, with so many people at festivals and carnivals, you know, there's always, there's always, always so many people and you're kind of like moving around that, uh, I just want to have the smallest, I don't know, the most compact bag that I can have with me. So I've even used, uh, my Chanel wallet on chain and caviar leather, obviously because caviar to me is a lot more carefree than lambskin. Um, but, uh, the Eva clutch, the favorite, uh, from Louis Vuitton in the Demi Ben as well. Or if you have the monogram, I would just use it on the little chain and not use it cross body, just something small up against your body compact that, you know, that it's with you at all times, you know, cause if you have a never full, you always run the risk of, of, even though I love these bags, you always run the risk of someone maybe slipping their hand in there in crowded areas. I mean, you just never know. I'm always a little more cautious. Um, so I would go with something a little bit smaller, or you can always do a Louis Vuitton speedy bandolier because of the security of the zipper. You're, I mean, you're hands-free and you still have enough space to be able to pick up any little souvenirs or knickknacks or something and put them in your bag without having to carry, you know, all these bags, all these shopping bags around. So, uh, definitely crossbody, definitely be hands-free and something extremely carefree, uh, in my opinion. Uh, okay. Laura Butler, Chanel offers a one year guarantee on their craftsmanship. Do you know if Louis Vuitton ever did offer any guarantee? Now they do not. Once upon a time, Louis Vuitton, when I first started buying Louis Vuitton, they said that, you know, within the first year we will replace it if anything happens. Now I have noticed, um, that they say it is a case by case scenario. Even if you buy the product, you know, a month ago and it's starting to, to crack and peel, you don't have that same, um, you know, and some sales associates might be, might be different. I don't know. I've told you guys before we get so many different, you know, so many different uh, opinions, so many different answers from all our sales associates that they're, that they're not all on the same page. You know what I mean? And you know, I, I've had some that say, oh yeah, up to, up to a year, if anything happens, you know, we, we will replace it. But for the most part, I've heard, as I told you guys before, that they just say it's a case by case scenario. So to me, it's kind of, it kind of takes away that peace of mind that we had before. So I know that if I was to buy this never full today, that I have a year, if I was to use it constantly, or uh, as long as it's within, you know, wear and tear, normal wear and tear, you can't just throw the bag, beat it up and say, okay, it's been a year. I want a new one, you know? Uh, but I just feel like it takes that peace of mind away from us being able to let go of the amount of money that we're paying for the items without kind of, you know, being so apprehensive. Okay. It's like, oh, what if I buy this now? What if it starts to peel and crack within a month? The last thing that you want to do is go to a counter and then have to argue with a sales associate, argue with the manager to find out whether or not your piece can be replaced, whether or not it could be repaired or whether or not it's normal wear and tear. I am sorry, but if you have been using a piece for a month, three months, four months, and, uh, you are a person that takes care of your items and they say that, you know, this isn't normal wear. That is, that is a lie <laughs> to me. That is a lie because that just means that the quality isn't there anymore. You know, and I know that there's a, quite a few YouTubers out there that have been talking about the quality. I've been telling you guys about the quality for uh, a few minx Mondays now. And I just, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't make you feel, you know, like, 
okay, I can buy this and everything will be okay. And if it's not, I know I still have that guarantee. You know what I mean? So the case by case scenario. Okay. Uh, Yvette Vela, I bought a speedy bandolier, but sold it and I never used it, but I am now saving, but I, uh, because I want a mon monogram piece thinking about a speedy bandolier, or should I just get a speedy mono mon monogram and use the money maybe towards a mon mono wallet thoughts? What do you think? Uh, personally, if you have already purchased a speedy bandolier in the past and you didn't use it, I would advise you against purchasing another speedy bandolier, even if it is mon mono, because you do run the risk of it just sitting there as the other one did before. Um, if you like the classic bag, if you, if you really like the classic look of a speedy and not necessarily care so much for the bandolier, I would definitely recommend the Mon Mono piece uh, or the Mon Monogram uh, speedy. Uh, you guys know I love my piece. It is very bright. It is very me. And um, I just, I like it because it's beyond personalization as far as getting just a hot stamp or something like that. And um, I would get the Mon Mono uh, speedy, the classic, and definitely use the, the money towards a wallet. I, I mean, I would, I would highly recommend that. <laughs> or if you don't like the speedy period, then I would maybe wait a little bit, maybe just get the Mon Monogram piece, uh, for a wallet and then go from there to see if you really do like the Mon Mono and, um, then be able to invest in a Mon Monogram speedy or not. Uh, okay. Uh, MJ Stressa or Berkeley from Louis Vuitton. The Berkeley for looks, uh, the stress up for function. <laughs> Definitely. That's what I would do. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Ansel baby, what are your thoughts on the wear and tear on the delightful MM and Demi? Ben, have you heard if there's any cracking on the leather and the wear on the shoulder strap? Uh, okay. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, Louis Vuitton, uh, recent, uh, not recently, I'd say probably within the last year, year and a few months, uh, or maybe it's been a year, uh, Louis Vuitton revamped the delightful, um, they made it so that the canvas is a little bit softer and uh, it does have a smaller shoulder drop than the previous ones. Now, uh, I was on the purse forum and I was reading uh, quite a bit of threads on how many people were very upset with the new revamping of the Delightful because they're still having the same cracking issues. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of people that actually had cracking issues within the first month, within the first couple of weeks, within the first couple of months. Um, you know, and this goes back to what I told you guys before that peace of mind uh, is no longer there but um they said or uh, I, I read that one of the ladies said that um they have since revamped it again because as you guys know i don't own a delightful in my collection they have revamped it again and try to make the strap uh the shoulder strap a little bit thicker so that it doesn't dig into your shoulder and it's a little bit more comfortable but I mean, now you're revamping it a few more times. So it's kind of like, okay, you know, what's, what's going on, but I still have heard, uh, cracking issues, uh, the same issues that we've heard before with Demi Ben in general. Um, so it was, yeah, it's, you know, some people get, some people have those problems and some people don't, obviously the quality control is, um, is a, a little out of, out of, <laughs> I guess it's not, I don't know. It seems to have a little bit more issues than not. Uh, but I have still heard that even with the revamping. So just be careful on that. Uh, okay. Uh, everyday glam. I have a compact Marie Louis wallet. <laughs> I can't even say it. Compact Marie Lou, uh, wallet. I'm thinking of having reglazed. However, I have read that once it is reglazed, it can be prone to peeling afterwards, but I am worried that if I don't get it done, the canvas may crack your thoughts, any idea of the cost. Uh, so obviously, um, if you call Louis Vuitton or if you go in there, they'll always say it's a case by case scenario. They can't really give you a, I mean, they can give you a rough estimate if you go into the boutique. Um, but if you call, you know, over the phone, then they always say, bring in the piece and we'll be able to let you know or help you further. Um, now I, I definitely recommend you to get it reglazed. Um, I did that with my, uh, Josephine wallet and Demi Ben. Most of you guys know, I told you guys, uh, how it started to crack on the sides. And I always say that the minute that you start to see a crack, take it into the store or you start to see peeling on the varnishing, take it into the store because you always run the risk of it getting into the canvas. Once it gets into the canvas, there is absolutely nothing Louis Vuitton will do. They will actually refuse the, uh, the product from what I have learned. There might be, uh, instances where they'll still take it. I, I, I don't know. But, um, what I have learned is that they will actually refuse the item and say, we, there's nothing we can do once it gets to the canvas. That's it. Um, 
but I had a problem with my Josephine. It started to crack and I still used it after I got it and I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. So, um, I definitely, definitely advise you to get it done. And, uh, when you do get it back, I would use it like you would any other wallet, maybe keep it in your rotation a little bit more. That way, if it is prone to happen, um, it'll happen sooner. And then you can take it back to Louis Vuitton and say, you know what, either I want a new piece or, um, maybe they'll be able to replace it altogether. I don't know. As I said before, it's a case by case scenario. Uh, but that is definitely what I would do. Get it, uh, reglazed. And I haven't had any issues with the, the reglazing, but I think for the wallet, they quoted me, uh, it was before the year had been up, but this is when they first said, you know, we guarantee pieces for a year or whatnot. Um, I think I, I think they quoted me $75, $75 or $65 to have it revarnished the entire thing. Uh, but when I actually went to pay, it was, uh, it was actually free of charge. Uh, so I think that's what it was. It's been quite some time now. I no longer own the piece, but, um, uh, I think that's what it was. So yes, get it reglazed. I would recommend. Uh, Jessica Hernandez. I was watching one of your older videos where you talked about a tip that you got about keeping a new bag out for three days from an essay in Europe. Should the room you're keeping your bag in be a closed room? Did you notice doing this helped your mon mono? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a closed room as long as it's a room where uh, you don't have to worry about uh, any interference with, you know, having to move it because of the sun or because of, uh, you know, someone being able to grab it or things like that. So I would always just let it sit here. And sometimes I have the door open, sometimes not, but I more than not, I more than, I, I usually don't have my blinds open unless I'm filming. Um, but I did notice a huge, huge difference. Uh, my Mon Mono piece, I think that it's slowly starting to get that. Uh, it's still fairly, it looks fairly brand new still, but I have noticed that I don't have as many issues with, um, any of the patina kind of being, um, more, you know, on one more on one piece more than the other. As far as the handle, I feel like it's a little bit more uniform of a patina and I really do think it helps. So ever since, uh, she told me that I have been doing that with all of my bags and all of the, all of the patinas seem to be very even, and they're starting to get that honey golden color. And uh, you guys know that I don't like to put any uh, any chemicals on any of my bags uh, to speed up the process or to hold off on the patina process. I like the, the normal uh, patina process that, that Louis Vuitton pieces have for the leather. Uh, but yes, I, I, I mean, I have noticed a huge, huge difference. And I love it because I don't have to be as careful. It, all, it already has its own coating on its own with those three days. So I love it. I definitely recommend it. <laughs> uh, okay. Valerie Barone. I am searching, I am searching a card holder in Demi Ben in, or monogram to put my 22 fidelity cards. Oh my goodness. I have seen a zippy coin, but it is too small. Please help me. Um, a card holder in Demi Ben or monogram to put my 22 fidelity cards. Um, ooh, that's a little hard because I mean, the, the clays are too small to fit 22 cards. Uh, they might be able to fit, but you don't want to run that risk with stretching out the canvas or the zipper. Um, and the zippy coin, even though I do, I'm kind of on the fence on the zippy coin. I, I like it and I don't, uh, because it doesn't have enough space for the cards. I mean, it, even if you were to double up the cards in the credit card slots that you have, it would still make it to where it looks like it's kind of bursting. So I would, I wouldn't recommend that. And I know you said, um, Demi or uh, monogram, but I really do like the emprunt clays because you have a little bit more give with this leather. The canvas obviously restricts you from being able to stretch it out, to stretch it out a little bit more, but this one I really like. Um, and on here, I don't even know how many I have in there. I think I have, um, I think I actually have about 18 or 20 cards in there at the moment. And it fits in there perfectly. I don't have to worry about it being too bulky or taking up too much space and it's still pretty compact. So, uh, I really advise the emprunt clay because you can use it not only for your fidelity cards. If you wanted to, you can use it as another, um, you know, you can use it for other, other things. So it's a little bit more versatile. Uh, but as far as the other one, I mean, the only other thing that you might want to do for that is maybe use a mini pochette because you have a lot more give on there. So you have enough space for your fidelity cards and you have enough space for other goodies in there. So you might, I mean, you can look at that as well if you didn't want to spend um, the money on the emprunt clay, because this is a little bit pricier than the, the mini pochette. I believe the mini pochette is what, $310 in the States. And I think this one's still $440. Uh, so 
you might want to look at that, but a clay would definitely be a little, a little bit harder. But I agree with you. The zippy coin is, is definitely too, too small. All right. Alexis JP. I was thinking of buying the Chanel cocoa handle in medium. I wanted to know your thoughts. I don't have any Chanel other than my sunnies. If you had to choose, would you choose the cocoa handle in medium or the classic flap in medium with the caviar slash gold hardware, caviar leather slash gold hard hardware? Uh, personally for me, I would definitely pick the classic flap. Um, you know, uh, it's, I, I told you guys before in the past that sometimes it's a little bit easier for me. I've always, I noticed in the beginning, I would get so easily distracted with something else and I wouldn't like it as much as I wanted the piece that I was real, that I really had my eyes on. And had I, had I just kind of gone for the piece and kind of just kept focused on it, I would have gotten my, my classic flaps for a lot less than what I paid for. Uh, so I definitely advise to keep going for, you know, the, keep your eyes on the prize and go for the classic flap. Uh, the cocoa handle, I, I saw it a few times when I was in the boutique, um, a few weeks ago and I don't, I, I like it, but there's something about it. I don't like, I don't know if it's the stationary handle that, that it has. I like the fact that it's it, to me, it looks very classic, very classy, very ladylike. I love that feature about it. Um, but I don't know. There's just, there's a ton of people that would disagree with me and say it's probably one of the best bags. It's extremely comfortable. And a lot of people praise it on how light, how lightweight it is compared to a classic flap. So if you wanted, uh, especially because with a, um, with a medium large, you said a medium, right? With a medium large, um, classic flap, it's not, it's not the easiest to be able to put crossbody. It looks a little funky, to be honest. Uh, some people pull it off. I can't. Obviously, I'm a little bit more curvilicious than most people. <laughs> um, but the um, the cocoa handle has the 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 strap so that it makes it a little bit more comfortable to wear crossbody. If that makes any sense, if you wanted to. Uh, but I don't know. It's I don't know what it is about it. I, I, I definitely appreciate the bag and I think it is very, very beautiful, but I don't know if it would be for me. Uh, personally, I, I will always choose a classic flap over a, um, another bag from Chanel and they do have some very, very pretty bags. Uh, the last time I was there, they had an accordion style classic flap. Uh, wait, so it, I mean, it was gorgeous, but I noticed that the reason why I like the classic flaps, even the double flaps, a lot of people would have would disagree with me now, is because uh, the structure. I love the fact that they keep their structure a lot more than some of the other seasonal bags um, that Chanel has, including the one that I just told you guys about before. I thought it was a great bag, but I can see that over time it will start to wear and it'll start to get really, really soft and lose its shape. So uh, for me, definitely would be the classic, um, the classic flap. Uh, okay, Eve, one, two, three... W A and Melissa Bailey had similar questions. So I put them together. What do you think of the Chloe drew bag? I prepaid one for one after searching for a saddle bag, but now I'm having buyer's remorse and I didn't even pick up my bag yet. By the way, I purchased the large size one in the tan color with the gold hardware. Uh, okay. So the Chloe drew bag, I was actually, where were we? I saw it the, uh, not the other day. Um, it was behold before the whole thing, um, happened this, this last week, but we were, where were we? I don't even remember where we were, but I saw it in the, in the window display and I really liked the bag. I think the only thing that I question is the, um, the opening and it has a little chain. I don't know, but I think it is a really beautiful bag. I absolutely love the chain detail that it has to be able to wear a uh, cross body. But I, I love it. It reminds me of a uh, of a vintage hat box. You know, it has that same structure, and I think that it has great structure to it. And I really love the opening on it. I am really, really. I mean, I have thought twice about should I get it, should I not? You know, it was there with the tan with the gold hardware, and I fell in love with it. I think there's just something about it, and. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Definitely a big fan. However, if you're having buyer's remorse without even picking up the item, maybe that's your gut telling you that the, that maybe that's not the piece that you really want, uh, or maybe you should hold off on something. So you guys know that even though I love a lot of these bags and I think they're fabulous, once you get that buyer's remorse, once you get that tiny, that kind of tiny notion, should I get it? Should I not? That's when you start to think maybe I should listen to my gut instinct and maybe pass on it, but you can pick it up 
try it out at home. See if you like it, put in your goodies, you know, trying a few outfits to see how you like it and take your time deciding, um, you know, and then go from there. But I do really think it's a beautiful bag and the hardware is just gleaming. And obviously the department store lights don't help because they make everything look way better. <laughs> right? <laughs> at least I feel that way anyways. <laughs> um, Okay, Sue Ellen Walters. I recently purchased the MM Favorite in the monogram canvas, and I am excited to use it. I am five foot seven, and I noticed that the strap is too short for me to for me to use crossbody. Is there a longer strap that I could purchase? Also, could you recommend some small leather goods that I can purchase to maximize the use of my bag? I carry an iPhone six plus, so it's important for me to have my phone fit as well. Um, on, I mean, obviously you guys know that I always say that using a clay, whether it's the emprunt or the regular, um, small clay, I think I have one in my bag. Let me check. I do either whether you have this kind of clay or this kind of clay, I think these are great because you can use them for so many other items. They're very, very versatile and you can use them as a little wallet. So this won't take up too much space inside of the favorite. Um, what else? I think a mini pochette might fit in there, especially in the MM. It might be a little bit of a stretch, but I think it'll fit in there. And that one can be your catch-all. You can have makeup in there if you wanted to. Um, you can have, what else? I mean, there's, I just like, you guys know that I like versatile pieces for Louis Vuitton. Some, sometimes I don't like to use things solely for that piece with the only exception of my, uh, round coin purse. This is all I use it for is for coins. Uh, but I would definitely recommend, um, the mini pochette, the clay for a wallet, and maybe even this for your coins. If you don't, obviously you won't have any space for, you know, for your coins in here plus cash. And this won't take up any, I mean, this won't take up any space. And you have your six ring key holder if you wanted to for your keys. And this fits perfectly plus your phone. Um, so I think, um, I think those three or four items would be great. And there is another strap that you can get. I forget the size of it, but I think it retails for $210 here in the States. Uh, they have a variety of different straps that you can get and you can check some of them out online. Uh, if you just put in strap on side, I mean, on top of the, uh, on top of the search bar. My goodness, I'm so tongue tied right now. Um, but they do have a few others that you can use. Um, I know that they wanted to offer that to me when I thought about getting the favorite, uh, because as you know, just like you, it, I think it's a little too short and it looks a little funky on my body frame. I feel like I, like I overwhelm the bag, you know what I mean? It's not pleasing to me. I, I, I'm like, this does not work. But when I put on that longer strap, it definitely worked for me. It kind of reminded me of the strap for the Eva clutch. And I think that's why I liked the Eva clutch so much because it just lays perfectly on my body frame and I'm five foot five. Uh, okay. And I have two more questions. Uh, Paris, Nicole, 1989. What are your tips for a happy marriage? Um, Okay. So obviously everyone's marriage is different. Different things work for different people. So I am by no means a, an expert on it, but, um, I think that communication is key in a marriage. Definitely. You know, if you guys, if, if two people communicate, I think it's the best thing for a marriage because I think communication is key. And I know some people might think that's so after school special of me to say that everyone says that, but I honestly do feel that, uh, you know, and, uh, just be honest with one another. Honesty is another big thing. Honesty, communication, and, Another thing that I always advise, and my mom told me this a long time ago, is always make time for one another, especially in, you know, today's day and age. It's so easy to get carried away with work and with our ki with kids and doing this and doing that. And we get so, so busy that sometimes we we lose track of, of our relationships, you know? So I think uh, Stevie Wonder said it best. If you just call to say, I love you, something small, a small gesture, whether you call them just to say, I love you, whether you text them just to say, I was thinking about you, I love you, something small to let that other person know that you're thinking about them, that you still care about them. And no matter what life brings at you, that you're still, you know, there, there's still that spark there, you know, because once you lose that spark, it's hard to kind of get back in the rhythm. You know, I've had so many friends have issues with that. Uh, I've had friends that have said, you know, the grass, the grass is greener on the other side. It's like, no, honey, the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you are, where you water it. You know what I mean? So you always want to make time for one another and just the small things, the small details is what makes it so you know, just kind of keeps it lively and keeps it like, okay, like even though we're busy, even though you're 3000 miles away from me at work. And maybe if you're busy with, with this going on in your job that you still just want to say, you know what? I love you. I just wanted to hear your voice. 
okay, I'll talk to you later. You, you know, like I've gotten those phone calls before. I've given those phone calls before to my hubby and it's so nice to hear that. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, they kind of center you, you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, just telling your, telling your spouse, telling your partner what you feel and, and just being honest with them definitely makes for a great marriage. In my opinion, there's so many other things that you can, uh, that lead up to, or that, that, contribute to a happy marriage. But I think that those three are the key to having, um, a great marriage in my opinion. Like I said, everything works for different people. Different couples are different, uh, and, uh, different things work for different people, but that's just works for us. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And last question from Sally K. How do you feel about my goodness, I can't read. How do you feel about people purchasing likes on Instagram? Have you ever heard of this before? Uh, okay, so I have heard of this before. And uh, for those of you that don't know, there are people out there uh, who actually buy likes on Instagram. So, you know, if you're used to getting maybe 20 likes, you can, I guess you can purchase more. I don't know. Per I've never done that. Um, and how do I feel about that? I, I mean different strokes for different folks. But for me, I don't get it. Um, I am by no means a photographer whatsoever. So when it comes to Instagram, what I see is what I take a picture of. And some of my pictures are horrible. Some of my pictures are grainy, but I'm just sharing, you know, what I see, you know what I mean? I'm not trying, sometimes I'll be like, Oh, I want to make it all pretty, you know, but I just, I don't understand why someone would buy likes. I, I don't get, I don't, I don't get it. Their reasoning is their reasoning, reasoning. And I am not one, you know, who am I to judge what works for someone else? So yeah, but for me personally, I don't, I don't see the allure of it. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. I know I went a little overboard today, but I haven't, I haven't done one of these videos. So I want to go in depth on it and hopefully I was able to help you guys out. And then I also have my March no, my March favorites, my February favorites coming tomorrow. And then, um, possibly the Pouchette Matisse review for Wednesday. So that does it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. And as always make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.